television landscape has changed so much since you know, we started seeing you on Queer Eye. Yeah. How incredible is it for you to feel like you were part of a trailblazing group of people that brought this kind of lifestyle television to the masses? I feel great. I want to say that when we made Queer Eye, we never thought of ourselves as important or as activists. Um, we were proud of being out. We were the first television show that I know of that had an entirely openly gay cast. Um, and it, now it, there was a lot of commercialism in the show, and it was a makeover show, and we, uh, we, we could per perhaps be faulted for blazing the tr We were sort of trailblazers in product placement. Uh, f lucky for me uh, that I wasn't the grooming guy and didn't have to talk about a certain brand of teeth whitening strips that he had to talk about, I think, like 50 times. Made a ton of money for Bravo. Bravo was very gutsy to air to, to back that show so aggressively. And, and Andy and the, uh, Francis Berwick, the president of Bravo, would tell you today that they still lean on those five subject areas, are still the centerpiece of Bravo's programming uh, direction with a touch of loathsome and wealthy housewives. <laughs> Bless Andy's heart, I love him to death. And I'm so- We all need a and look at, pleasure. look at what happened to Andy. He went from being a, a suit at Bravo. He had previously been an on-camera guy anyway. I think he was with CNN, he was a journalist. Um, he, he's no longer even an executive at Bravo. He is entirely uh, a, a television host. Um, so now he no longer has to negotiate against himself <laughs> for his pay. Um, qu the, the main thing about Queer Eye that I will say is that we, in, an, in an era before the internet was everywhere, um, we heard from hundreds, probably thousands of gay kids who said, thank you for putting some gay people on TV that my parents can actually like. And I mean, firefighters liked us, cops, mar Marines. I mean, you know, it was a very good show. It wasn't the perfect. The reception but... surprising to you? We didn't know what was going to happen. We certainly couldn't have predicted that we'd be on the cover of Entertainment Weekly or in New Yorker cartoons, which was pretty awesome. Um, it was a great idea. And by, I should credit David Collins and Dave Metzler, the two guys who thought of it. They worked for a very long time, year, years, to get that show made. And I remember I auditioned with, with like five or 600 other people for that show. I had never been on TV. I never thought I'd get the part. I never thought the show would get made. Um, with that title, I never thought it would get made. I'll never forget the, the first time I watched Matt Lauer try to say the word queer on TV. So I was like, I mean, it's not a word people threw around a lot. And it was a very political word. I, I, I didn't like the title at, at the beginning. Really? I come to, I've come to realize I, I was wrong. Because I think the provocative nature of it, which balanced with the sweetness of the, the way the show ran uh, most of the time, it, it worked out. I vote and, for but, you know, Fab Five and now. And now I get to live, we had one. Andy put together a beautiful reunion show know, about, for us.